What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Nicely Chung of Benny. I'm here with my co-host, Greg King. What's good, everybody? And you're listening to the Ball Fake Podcast. Now, before we get into today's episode, make sure y'all follow our Instagram, at Ball Fake Podcast. Like and subscribe, turn on post notifications, and keep listening to our podcast on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. But um, today, we're going to obviously talk about the Lakers winning the 2020 NBA championship. This is now the 17th championship for LA. They're tied with the Boston Celtics for um, trophies, the most trophies in NBA history. Um, But Greg, what did you see in the first half of the game that, you know what I'm saying, could have went better for Miami side specifically? I think they could have played with more energy. Again, man, they're not playing, they weren't playing aggressive. Like those two games when they did, when they won. So I feel like they just, I feel like it took so much out of them the last game, and they just came out flat, man. They just looked confused. They couldn't really get started yeah. in, get into Jimmy, the game. Jimmy Butler having to play the every second of the game besides, like, 48 seconds, him playing 47 minutes, bro. I mean, you saw it in the press conference after the game. He, he walked off limping and everything. But um, last night I saw L.A., they, they got back to what they, um, you know what I'm saying, normally used to. Um, they got out on the fast break. And on top of that, L.A., they are undefeated after uh, losing a game. So they're 4-0 and losses. Now they're officially 5-0 because they won last night. But um, I thought Robinson from Miami, he got going early with his three-point shot. Uh, KCP did a de- decent job of guarding him. You know what I'm saying? He face-guarded Robinson um, to make those shots a little bit tougher. But L.A., they were they were a little bit iffy sometimes on um, – on the recovery because, you know, he Robinson's obviously coming off a ball screen. You know he's – 90% of his shots is coming from three-point – the peak, the three-point uh, range. But for L.A. side, I loved how Rajon Rondo came in the game and showed a ton of energy. And we needed that. Yeah, he – he him alone, bro, I think he had maybe nine points in the first half. He averages six points uh, for us in the regular or postseason, I believe. But – but what helped us was he was being aggressive. He saw them first few baskets go in, and that's why the three-point shot started going in. And then he started setting up teammates and everything. So I think him getting in the groove early really helped helped his uh, performance in that game. Yeah, because uh, L.A., we didn't shoot it that well in the first half. Um, they started the game one for six from three. Like I told you in previous episodes, I don't think that we're going to continue to shoot the three ball that yep, you're well right. like we did in game one. We shot right. 65% in – and the field goes for the entire first half. That was crazy. But um, Butler, he wasn't getting the mismatches that he wanted because you, we did an excellent job of defending the pick and roll, hedging real quick and getting back to our man. Um, and that's, you know what I'm saying, that's a key that's a key aspect in Bam Adebayo's offense because, like I stated in episodes in the past, he's really good at diving to the basket and, you know what I'm saying, either looking for his own shot or getting uh, another teammate wide open. But – it, it was funny too, like I said, just going back to Rondo because Rondo he struggled he struggled with his shot in um in in the entire postseason damn near specifically specifically in the past few rounds because he didn't he didn't play the first round he missed the first five games because he was injured obviously but it was it was good to really see him bounce back and you know what I'm saying add another NBA championship to his uh, resume and show why he's a good veteran point guard I think. I think because he used to not be able to shoot threes in the past. So now seeing like he's toward his end of his career, him knocking down three point shot and he added that to his game. That's re- that helped LA because that was another not a threat from the three point line, but as somebody who can, you know, hit the three point three point shot here and there. So I s- thought that was good. But I, yeah, like you said, the Lakers defense was just incredible. I think they just turned it up to another notch. Yeah, I, mean, I really want to give, give a shout out to their bench, their bench after all that slander that they got after game five. They really uh, came out and set the tone defensively. They sped Miami's offense up. Like I said, Robinson, Tyler Hero, they weren't able to get off the best quality shots. A lot of their shots were rushed. Mm -hmm. Um, Butler wasn't able to get his mismatches. And, bam, he just wasn't an offensive threat enough. And speaking about, bam, I would have liked to see Miles Leonard and Kelly Olenek play a little bit more. I think think it's best for – I think it would be it would have been best for Miami to just you know what I'm saying like I've stated uh, in the past, play Bam whenever Anthony Davis is out of the game because he can dominate LA's bigs 
be on top of that, LA, they're not going to have too many bigs out there because we're going to play small. So he's going to probably get switched on to Kuzma or uh, Markeith Morris, whomever, you know what I'm saying, after the uh, the ball screen that he sets. Mm-hmm. Sometimes he doesn't set the ball screen. He He's too much in a rush to or slip. Or slips, yep. Sometimes I feel like he needs to set the ball screen because that's going to help you get more open. And you know what I'm saying? You can interchange that, pick and yeah. pop, pick and roll, whatever. But – did you like the change of uh, with the Frank Vogel saying, "Hey, we're gonna play, we're gonna start Caruso instead of Howard"? Did you like that change? Yeah, I, I liked it just because, like Caruso, he he's been he's been one of those guys that we can depend on this entire postseason. Um, he's a great hustle player, like you've stated in the past. Um, he's able, you know, he he's a guy. He's not gonna make the wrong play. He's always gonna make the right player, and he's not one of those guys that sucks the energy, bro. He gives out more energy, like Stan Van Gundy stated uh, in Game Six last night. But, but back to your point, you said Bam played forty-two minutes, right? Yes. Kelly Olynyk played fifteen. Miles Leonard didn't even touch the floor. Right. So I think. They should have been more versatile, bro. I, I think they should have changed up their lineup. I think he was just so – he saw Bam being so successful in this playoffs and thought that was going to work against the big, you know, big-time Lakers. It wasn't going to work. Man. It, and it, it didn't work because Bam is – at the end of the day, he's undersized, and he has to – he's going to be facing up against Anthony Davis. This is a MVP caliber player, uh, a generational player, you could say – you know what I'm saying? He he's shown all series that he's phenomenal on the defensive end and offensive end as well. So I would have liked to see Bam check in when Anthony Davis was out and have Miles Leonard and Kelly Olynyk play while Davis is in the game. And you're just gonna have to hope that you know what I'm saying. Y'all can get some stops. I think Miles Leonard. You know what I'm saying? Him being a uh, such a team player, he's going to do whatever he can to help his team come out with a win. And it, it helps their offense a lot more because now it's like you damn near have five shooters, four yeah, or five shooters on the floor. floor. So it's going to bring Anthony Davis out, and that's going to leave Butler wide open in the line. If he, he gets that mismatch, have a drive, you can drive yep. Yeah, so I would have. that's just me. And then on top of that, them playing Dragic, uh, it was kind of a – It was just like uh, we – we're just gonna we're gonna give it a shot. Why yeah. not? Give he it a looked shot. he looked terrible. Bro. He from, I looked mean, terrible. from the from the get go, and I didn't expect him to. You know, what yeah, I'm he saying, came off an out, injury, bro. But like, he just had no rhythm. Bro. Yeah, he he had for, no rhythm. He was really a liability. Yeah, he was a liability in the game. But we got to give credit to again LeBron James, man, and Anthony Davis. Don't forget about Anthony Davis, yeah. man. Him and Rondo were LA's offense exactly for the first. Uh, Couple minutes in yeah, the first quarter. Yeah, because LA's de- defense didn't really do. I mean, not defense. Uh, bench didn't really do a lot yeah. as far and as LeBron, Kuzma and Marquise LeBron Moore. was absolute. He was so productive in the paint, and that's something I've been. I've told you before the series started. I said LeBron James paint production is going to be a key factor in whether or not they win or not. And uh, Anthony Davis, I mean, he had a decent first quarter, eight points, but he, you know, what I'm saying he got in foul trouble, two fouls. LeBron James had nine points, five boards. And he had no turnovers the entire and game. And I like to see that. He needed to stop turning the ball over. I don't know why he was in this little slump, but he. I'm glad to see that he wasn't turning the ball over. And they also got contributions from Danny Green. Yeah, he shot 40% from the field, but he made timely buckets, especially that three in the fourth quarter. I don't remember what the score was, but that was a timely three-pointer that they needed. They got help from Caldwell Pope, too. Another good game by him at 17, efficient quality shot so I'm they got help from their starting lineup in Miami they didn't they didn't get they got to the line but they weren't knocking that they're knocking down their free throws like usual normally the first in the first five games of this series they were shooting 88 percent from the line barely missed but um last night I don't know what the numbers ended uh up being but it was I mean Miami, they just struggled with their offense from top to bottom. Not mu- not much bench scoring, nothing in transition, really. They only had eight transition points compared to L.A. 16. Uh, like I stated, bro, they didn't hit any – they didn't hit too many free throws. They only had 58 points heading into the fourth quarter. And your best player, he had a pretty much uh, lackadaisical game. He was really quiet, not – he didn't have the best um, – he wasn't the, the most efficient player out there on the floor. Especially with him, you know what I'm saying, dropping all these triple doubles and stuff. Yeah, he had to play Being able to contain LeBron James just a little bit on the other end of the basketball. But Yeah, I was surprised Miami missed a lot of free throws. But they shot 59% from the free throw line, so it really hurt them. Really did hurt them. But I feel like they didn't get their feet under underneath them either. They just looked tired. And when you have to play so many minutes and just been – it was a really bang bangy series. Like, everybody was getting elbows in here and there, diving for 50-50 balls, like – 
Yeah. And I, I really, I, I feel like. It's going to take a toll on your body. I feel like Jimmy Butler, he's a phenomenal player. But I don't think Jimmy Butler can be the best player on the championship team. I think he can he can obviously be the best player on the team that can make it to a championship, but I don't think that they'll be able to – he can be the, the number one option on a championship team, especially with Miami being such a reluctant team on their shooting. That's what Houston's problem is. Oh, we're just going to outshoot you. They're, they're, putting, they're putting too much pressure on, like, one key point. They're, they don't have enough offense. To, like, Miami, you can, Miami, they're a team that they have, like, a ton of offensive players that can, you know what I'm saying, put the ball in the basket, go ISO. Tyler Hero, Goran Dragic, uh, Bam Adebayo's good, and, and he's a good key piece to their offense. But I just didn't think – I don't think that Jimmy Butler is – because sometimes you just need an isolation player, somebody who can just go get you a bucket, bucket whenever yeah. your team is struggling. For L.A., it's obviously Anthony Davis and LeBron. or LeBron James. For the Clippers, it's Kawhi Leonard, Paul George. Boston, Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown. That's what's going to set the difference between you and the rest of the pack. And that, and obviously, LA showed that, and that's why they they are the 2020 NBA champion. And they deserve it. But um, let's talk about LeBron a little. Yeah, bit. me too. Let's talk eleven about triple doubles in the finals. Uh, he had twenty eight triple doubles in the postseason. He all, averaged that's second most all time behind Magic Johnson, who has thirty. Um, he averaged twenty nine, eleven, and eight. On a sixty percent shooting, so I mean, this is this is a guy who is just we we really have to sometimes just sit back and just appreciate him for what he is because I don't think we're ever going to see another player for a long time who who can really like actually resemble LeBron James's game. I mean, you have guys who are somewhat similar in a Ben Simmons, but they've got a long way to go before they can even scratch the surface of what LeBron was doing. He he this is a guy who arguably has the best career in NBA history. Four-time Finals MVP, uh four-time, four-time NBA champion, champion uh, multiple regular season MVPs. How many how many first team all how many all NBA teams has does he has he made? Like this is a someone who's had a phenomenal career and all we do is bash him and bash him. The only thing that we can really bash LeBron James for is not being perfect. Exactly. He's he's accomplished every single thing that you know what I'm saying has been in his way. You guys wanted him to win a championship, he's done it four times. You guys wanted him to be the number one seed in the West, he's done it. Like this is somebody who we just have to respect, and we he, I don't think he'll get his credit until he has this farewell tour. But And you can't you can't make an excuse that – let's bring up something. You can't bring up an excuse that uh, this bubble championship doesn't matter or an actual bite because that's not, that's not fair, bro. The, peop, the teams that decided to come back bought into, okay, we came here for a reason. We wanted to win a championship. Exactly. So you can't fault LeBron for those teams – uh, for those teams, last last of day, last of days will go play and for or anyone anything say, like that. For anyone to say that this is an easy championship, okay, I'm gonna break it down. I'm gonna break down each and every series for you. In the first round, they went up against a red hot Portland Trailblazers team that was on fire. Damian Lillard averaged 50 points in his past three to four games heading into the playoffs. This is a, some people actually picked Portland to overcome the L.A. Lakers. And they were sadly mistaken. You know what I'm saying? LeBron James, they lost the first game. Because game one is a feel-out game for LeBron James. Yeah. He, he's made that abundantly clear. But they end up winning the next four by a landslide, not even close. And now in the second round, he's going up against two former NBA MVPs in James Harden and Russell Westbrook. What does he do? He gets them out of here in five. And now he's going up against a resilient Denver Nuggets team, the team that has a Ph.D. in adversity <laughs> with a great coach. And uh, multiple multiple top prospects in Michael Porter Jr., Jamal Murray, Murray. and Nikola Jokic. And he gets them out of here in five. five. And a lot of people thought that, you know what I'm saying, they could even push L.A. To, to seven. Yeah. yeah. And and he got the number one seed in the West. So that's another big Right. Thing and then on it. top of that, you're going up against a Jimmy Butler-led uh, team that – I mean, they were the five seed, but they were hot, man. They were this playing. This isn't together. a regular five seed. Exactly. We have we they they have multiple guys who can put the ball in the basket. And Tyler Hero, like I stated, Goran Dragic, Jimmy Butler is uh, a beast in, within himself. Jay Crowder can get going. They have bro, their bench. They can play like ten deep. And what does he do? He gets the job done. 
especially with his co-star struggling. Like, Anthony, let's be honest, Anthony Davis didn't have the best series in the world. I agree. They, he struggled a little bit. He had, he had some games where he only was able to get nine shots up, 15 points. Not MVP like and LeBron James, he w- without a doubt he's he's easily you know what I'm saying has sh- quieted every single critic. There's nothing else for you guys to judge this man for. He's done every single thing. I would agree. So I mean, he carried his team to the championship, man. That's what that's what superstars do. I mean, the only he's thing just can, he's just stacking his resume, man. The only like, thing that they can knock him for is just not being perfect. And I think. I think LeBron James, in my opinion, is the greatest player of all time. Me too. You can argue that Michael Jordan is, but I mean, we're not even going to get into all that, man. Let's just sometimes just love love seeing these two these two great players play that in two different eras. Game. Let's make sure in two different eras because they're two different players. That's why it's hard to compare. They're and two the different game players. Has changed a lot. Yeah, a lot. You can argue that okay, we weren't playing football like you guys were in the eighties and nineties. <laughs> But we're more skilled. You have to get up and guard. You didn't have uh, stretch bigs back in the day. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? They were back Dark to, ba- yeah. they were, they were back to the Kevin basket Garnett. in the 90s and 80s, right. bro. So, so, yeah, but, that's that's not fair. I, I don't like these excuses for LeBron. It's so lame, bro. Like, just give, give the guy the credit, bro. Like, if he wants – he should have respect. Now, I don't – And he – this is somebody who's also – one. I would consider I would consider this championship one of the hardest championships – there was to you know what I'm saying win. Yeah, but with I all the circumstances, I would say I would say the best champion, the hardest championship that I've seen with my own two eyes. Definitely 2016. 2016 NBA Finals against the best regular team, best regular season team of all time, a 73 win Golden State Warriors team. You were down three games to one, with the opportunity, with the chances of going home three straight games in a row, and he overcame that on the road in a game seven in a hostile environment. On the road twice, because that was back then when they did the three, two, yeah. one thing. So he had to go to game five in um right. in Oakland. Right. So But LeBron James, you you guys just have to give him his credit. I think it's about time that y'all stop hating on the man. But that's really all I have to say. Uh Congratulations to him and the Los Angeles. Yeah, Lakers. I'm happy for LeBron. They man. did it for Kobe Bryant, obviously. And the Rest city in of LA can, you know what I'm saying, go ahead and parade and party. Yeah, man. I mean, LeBron just keeps stacking on his resume. I mean, I think going into the next season, I think they will be the favorites. I think they need to add a couple more pieces in the free agency, but right. they'll definitely be the favorites. Right. And, like uh, I was, like I stated, Kuzma, Morris, McGee, those guys are expendable. Yeah. And, uh, I would like to see Obviously, LeBron and AD come back. Rondo can come back. Yeah, I hope AD Caruso. Stays. Yeah, and Danny Green. He's expendable as well. I I'd bring back KCP and Dwight Howard, but everybody else, it's see spend- what you can get. For yeah, them. I agree. In Miami, let's let's tip our hat to Miami because they play. They fought hard, man. They yeah, fought really this hard. This is a team that overachieved. They knocked out the MVP and Defensive Player of the Year. They swept a good uh, blue collar in- Indiana Pacers team, and they got over the hump against a really skilled offensive Boston Celtics team. So I like to tip my hat off to them. Yeah, and they will be back. If they add you know, another superstar along Jimmy Butler, they will definitely be back. They right. can keep everybody. So, But I think that's about it for today. Uh, we appreciate you guys tuning in once again. Make sure y'all keep hitting that like and subscribe button. Turn on our post notifications and follow our Instagram. Keep at running them up. Podcast. Keep running it up. But outside of that, it's your boy, Nice Chunga Benny. I'm here with my co-host, Greg King. And we out. And we're out.